What's happening, y'all? Corey Bush and a Fantasy Stock Exchange coming at you today to break down the Sunday Million Contest, Millie Maker, and all of my lineups from those sites. As you guys have seen, I'm one of the newest contributors to Draft Sharks. I write a weekly GPP lineups preview for FanDuel and for DraftKings for the site. So make sure you guys check that out each and every week. And what I'm going to be doing today, basically, is breaking down who won the DraftKings Millie Maker, who won the FanDuel Sunday Million, breaking down their lineup, some of the, you know, the composition, where they spent up, where they spent down, and uh, reviewing my own lineups as well. And unfortunately, this wasn't the uh, biggest week for me, but uh, hopefully we can bounce back in the future. So we're going to start with the FanDuel side of things. And as you guys can see on the screen right now, this was the winning lineup for the Sunday Million Contest on FanDuel, the main slate, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., games for FanDuel. You guys can see they had Patrick Mahomes, DeAndre Swift, Joe Mixon, Tyree Kill, Debo Samuel, Corey Davis, TJ Hawkinson, Stephon Diggs, and the Texans defense. Now, a couple of these pieces made an appearance in my article. I did talk about DeAndre Swift and Joe Mixon as pretty solid plays. I did also talk about Tyree Kill on both DraftKings and the FanDuel side of things that I thought if you were going to spend up at wide receiver this week, Tyreek Hill was a phenomenal play because they were going to move him all around against guys like Troy Hill in the slot who frankly don't have the speed to keep up with Tyreek Hill. And then we saw that kind of come to fruition with the 75 yard touchdown that Hill caught Debo Samuel. Again, another guy that was a good play, but I was more on the Brandon Ayuk side of things. Kyle Shanahan obviously had other plans for that because, uh, I mean, it looked like Debo Samuel was the the main guy there. Ayuk dealing with the hamstring injury as well. And, you know, some other disciplinary things that they talked about with Corey Davis. Again, he was another guy that I was on. I was on his teammate as well, though, with uh, Elijah Moore, who had a bit of a disappointing game. But Corey Davis, two touchdown performance for him. And then TJ Hawkinson there was the biggest beneficiary of the Lions playing from behind most of the game. He just got peppered with targets. Diggs actually a big spend. For this guy and his lineup didn't actually contribute very much to it. His lineup pretty much went off without Stephon Diggs, which is really impressive to see. So, and then the Houston Texans, another defense that I heralded as probably the best value play at defense this week because the Jacksonville Jaguars were coming to town and, and Trevor Lawrence just didn't look good to me in the preseason. I thought he could struggle to have some turnovers in this game. And that's exactly what happened. He threw three interceptions, took a sack, also a pretty low scoring affair for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I didn't expect them to come in and just wipe the Houston Texans. The Texans had a lot of veteran talent on their team. And while they're not the most talented team overall, those veteran players really beat up on a young Jacksonville Jaguars team. So let's get to my lineups on FanDuel to see how I did. And there's, you guys are going to notice a theme kind of throughout me recapping my own lineups, but I did pretty well in terms of um, what quarterback I was playing and things of that nature. Where I really got burned was the running backs that I selected and, and mainly the ones that I selected them over because in my column, I talked about the Najee Harris being a, a fantastic play this week because the Steelers were going up against the Bills. The Bills were more of a run funnel type of defense because their passing defense is so good with Tredavious White and Micah Hyde and all those guys on the back end. I really thought they'd lean on Najee Harris and some of the pressure with the Steelers offensive line having all these new pieces. I really thought Najee Harris could see a lot of targets in this game, a lot of uh, carries as well. He saw 100% of the Steelers snaps, so the usage was phenomenal. He just wasn't able to really get anything done on the ground or through the passing game. So Najee Harris, definitely a big miss for me. He, uh, he, he really let me down in that one. Antonio Gibson, again, 25 opportunities in this game, but he did fumble, didn't get into the end zone, so didn't return a whole lot of value for me there. But as I talked about in the column, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, I said they were the number one stack that I was going after this week. If I was going to double stack anything, I took the over in uh, the Viking Bengals game. It was 47 and a half, so it just barely hit the over there at uh, 51 points, I believe. And Jefferson and uh, Thielen were also, they were on their way to having a big game. If Jefferson could have just extended a little bit more and gotten into the end zone, he would have had a much bigger game. But that cousin Thielen Jefferson stack was looking really rough until about the second quarter, third quarter of the game. And then they really picked it up. And then I also talked about running it back with T Higgins or Jamar Chase. Again, I chose T Higgins here. If he didn't leave the game earlier to get an IV, I think he would have had a bigger game. But overall, this lineup was pretty solid. I ended up making my money back. Logan Thomas, again, was a play that I talked about as was Tyree Kill and the Houston Texans defense. So let's uh, look at this other lineup that I did on FanDuel as well. You guys can see Christian McCaffrey, the human cheat code, definitely carried this lineup at running back for me. Again, Najee Harris burned me again. Tyree Kill, I got into my lineup in this one. And I mean, I said, if I was going to spend up at wide receiver this week, Tyree Kill was going to be the reason. Uh, Jerry Judy was a guy that I wanted to get into a lot of my lineups. I thought he had a fantastic matchup. I think he would have had a bigger game in this one. Obviously, he left this game with a high ankle sprain. It sounds like he's going to be out for at least you know six to eight weeks 
on the season, potentially longer if he's dealing with some complications there. Austin Hooper got out to a really strong start in this game. I believe he caught three passes on the first drive and then was never to be heard from again. So Austin Hooper was kind of a miss on my part. I thought he'd be a nice GPP play, a bit of a contrarian play for a lot of people to kind of fade, but I thought the game script would have been good for the Browns and it ended up kind of leading the Chiefs most of the game. So that kind of hurt me a little bit. And then same goes for Baker Mayfield. The running backs got it done in this one, as is probably going to be the case with the Browns a lot of the time. Baker Mayfield, not a high passing ceiling because they run the ball so frequently in the red zone. And they have those two great running backs in Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Kind of took away the touchdown opportunity from Baker Mayfield there. Joe Mixon, I got him into my lineup. He ended up paying off for me there. If I had just pivoted off of uh, Najee Harris to Joe Mixon in a lot of my lineups or DeAndre Swift potentially, I could have done a lot better on the slate as well. So the Lions defense, again, you guys can see they kind of let me down there. I thought there was a chance that Jimmy G could have a couple turnovers in this game. And then the, the uh, 49ers line has some new pieces. Maybe the Lions could get after him. Didn't really come to fruition. So the last FanDuel lineup that I have, as you guys can see here, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins definitely helped me carry this lineup. And again, I just picked hor horribly at running back this week. Derrick Henry wasn't great. Also in this game, they, they got behind very early to the Cardinals. And I, I guess basically the way I constructed this lineup, as you guys can see, was that I thought the Titans would get out to a big lead. Then they would start running Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry would get a lot of you know scoring opportunities, maybe a big long run in this game. And the Cardinals would be playing from behind. Well, the exact opposite scenario played out. The Cardinals got the big lead. Titans were playing from behind. And we know that Derrick Henry is not the most equipped running back in the passing game. So he wasn't uh, fully involved in this one with the kind of blowout loss to the Cardinals. So uh, this lineup overall was pretty balanced. Again, I picked pretty well at wide receiver overall. I just, I couldn't pick a running back to save my life in this one. And I also spent up for George Kittle in this lineup. And uh, he didn't really get the job done, even though the Niners really romped the uh, Lions for the first three and a half quarters of this game. Moving from FanDuel over to DraftKings, as you guys can see, this is the Millie Maker winning lineup. And this guy pretty much had hits all over the board, as you guys can see. Did spend up. Uh, Joe Burrow was a guy that was moderately expensive and very projected high ownership. So he was a guy that I wasn't going to play this week. As I talked about in my column, I wanted to go fade Joe Burrow and play Kirk Cousins on the other side of things. I thought that was the better GPP play getting away from the chalkier play in Joe Burrow. But this guy kind of ate the chalk here, went with Joe Burrow, stacked him with T. Higgins, also had Joe Mixon on the ground. Those guys all kind of paid off for him. He also hit on kind of a dart throw running back in Melvin Gordon. I think this was one that I, I definitely missed on. I thought Javante Williams would be the guy to own in this backfield. They did split snaps about 50-50. I think it was 36-34 for Javante Williams. Melvin Gordon and Javante split touches as well. It was like 16 touches to 14 touches. But Melvin Gordon, of course, the long 70-yard touchdown run, Definitely uh, took the mantle in the Denver backfield. Tyreek Hill, again, obviously had a phenomenal game. Debo Samuel as well. Travis Kelsey, just a freak of nature. Six receptions, 76 yards, two touchdowns. Marvin Jones also had a great game. He was a guy I mentioned in the column as well as a good um, dart throw, although he was projected to be highly owned, which is why I wasn't using him in a whole lot of my lineups. And then the Cardinals defense, again, I didn't see that type of performance coming out of the Cardinals defense. I thought Tennessee was going to be able to put points up early and often, and the Cardinals will be playing from behind, but... The exact opposite played out, as I said. Chandler Jones with a five-sack performance just absolutely wiped the floor with Taylor Lewan in this one and really helped that Cardinals defense, which was one of the cheapest on the slate, uh, really return a lot of value for uh, this guy here. So congrats to him as the Millie Maker winner. Now, on DraftKings, I did even worse than I did on FanDuel. On FanDuel, at least I made my money back in all my lineups. On DraftKings, I really crapped out, and it looked even worse uh, at the beginning of some of these games. Zach Wilson, Corey Davis, and Elijah Moore, I wanted to get exposure to that stack. Obviously, two of those pieces paid off at their current price with Wilson and Corey Davis. Elijah Moore was missed downfield on a couple of big plays. If he cashed in on those, then this lineup probably looks a lot better. And again, I suffered some injuries on DraftKings as well because I wanted to get Raheem Mostert into my lineup. As soon as I found out that Trey Sermon was out, I thought Raheem Mostert might have a big workload in this one. And in typical Raheem Mostert fashion, he left the game early. So that definitely burned me in this lineup, as did Jerry Judy. George Kittle, again, I paid up for him on here and he didn't have a big game. I thought he would have had a bigger one. Uh, Alvin Kamara in that full PPR scoring format that DraftKings is. I really thought he could have a great game in this one. He didn't really have that great of a game with the, the Saints getting out to such a huge victory. But Alvin Kamara putting up 20 carries is definitely something you love to see. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons defense, again, I thought there'd be a chance that Jalen Hurts, with the volatility that we saw from him last year, I thought he could fumble, maybe have a couple turnovers in this game. And uh, the Falcons just got absolutely wiped by the Eagles. That wasn't even a close game whatsoever. So on to the next lineup here. Again, you guys can see that the Cousins, Thielen, Jefferson stack was pretty solid for me there, along with Higgins on the run back. But uh, I couldn't pick a running back. James Robinson definitely let me down. Again, the, the Jags just got wiped by the Texans and, and the game script got completely out of hand. Carlos Hyde and James Robinson, it looks like they're going to be in a split backfield 
going forward. James Robinson's still the guy that I would like to own from a redraft perspective, a guy that I'd probably play in DFS lineup for sure. But James Robinson is not the same James Robinson that we saw last year. He's not that 80 plus percent opportunity share running back that Doug Marone turned him into. This is more of a split backfield, the more traditional backfield that we're used to seeing. They're not just going to hand the guy every single opportunity. And then uh, that Packers game didn't really cost me too much in my, uh, in my DFS lineups. I definitely could have had more exposure to those guys, but Robert Tunyon definitely let me down as I'm sure Devonte Adams, Aaron Jones, and Aaron Rodgers let a lot of other people down as well. Wasn't expecting that performance out of the saints, nor was I expecting it out of the Packers. So on the final lineup that I have here, I'm going to break down for you guys today. And then again, if you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Maybe you're watching me for my FSE channel, go over and subscribe to there as well. But, uh, the last lineup that I have here, again, I was good at predicting quarterbacks this week. Jalen Hurts had a great game, was really buoyed by the fact that he had 62 rushing yards in this game, which is why I was on Jalen Hurts, as was a lot of the people at Draft Sharks. Uh, as you guys can see, again, couldn't pick a running back. James Robinson, Najee Harris burned me again. Jerry Judy was in a lot of my lineups, didn't de uh, definitely did not pay off for me there. Calvin Ridley, I spent up for. I thought he was going to have an absolutely phenomenal game in this one against Darius Slay, but after that first drive, we didn't see a whole lot of Calvin Ridley and the Falcons just couldn't get anything going on offense. Devontae Smith, again, he was a guy that I featured in that article uh, on the Draft Sharks plays that I was really in on. And Devontae Smith at 4,500 to me, he really returned a lot of value. The fact that he was able to come in right away and establish himself as the number one target, he ran the most routes on the team, ran the most snaps with the starters in the preseason. I really thought that Devontae Smith was going to have a big debut in this one. And he definitely cashed in against a terrible Atlanta Falcons defense. I think Smith is going to be a guy that we can throw into DFS lineups or uh, start in our flex spots each and every week with Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts proved a lot to a lot of people in this game and hopefully he can continue that momentum. Again, Logan Thomas with Curtis Samuel going to the IR, I said was going to be a guy that would really reap that benefit because Curtis Samuel was the slot receiver for this team. Last year, Logan Thomas did a lot of his damage from the slot. And with the Curtis Samuel signing, I was lower on Logan Thomas, but now that Curtis Samuel is out, Logan Thomas makes a lot more sense. So he was a big hit for me there. And then the final guy that I didn't really have in any other lineups except for this one was Tyler Lockett. And he had the, obviously he had a big long touchdown in this one, which aided his production. And the Seahawks didn't really have to pass the ball a whole lot against this Colts defense. But when they did pass it, they really cashed in on it. And that's kind of the nature of Russell Wilson and the Seahawks offense over the past couple of years. So hope you guys enjoyed that. That was kind of my breakdown of the DFS slate for week one. Make sure you guys tune into week two's articles on the Draft Sharks website and also tune in next Monday when I recap week two. Hopefully I got a bit of a luckier week. Maybe I win some money on this one. Hopefully help you guys win some money as well if you did check out the article. So peace out guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.